Hello everybody, my name is Esteban. I'm a PhD student at Università della Svizzera Italiana in Lugano, Switzerland. I'm going to present our work in collaboration with Sayed Ali Bahrainian and Fabio Crestani, titled A Dataset for Research on Depression in Social Media. What are mental disorders? It comprises a broad range of problems with different symptoms, generally characterized by the presence of abnormal thoughts, feelings, behavior, and relationship with others. The most common examples are depression, schizophrenia, eating disorders, and many others. It's important to identify as soon as possible such disorders, given that the lack of a timeless treatment could lead to psychotic episodes, thought of self-harm, and at its worst, to suicide. What can we do from the side of computer science? Research on language and psychology has shown that several useful cues about the individual's mental state, including their social and emotional conditions, could be identified by examining their patterns of language use. In fact, language attributes could act as indicators of the current mental state, personality, and even personal values. This is because such mental related variables are encoded in the words that individuals use to communicate. Moreover, an increasing number of users are using social media platforms to share their feelings, thoughts, and moods on a daily basis. And therefore, these sites have become promising sources of data to study different mental disorders, such as depression. Although, despite the great importance that research on mental health through the analysis of social media activity has, data sets are limited and resources are scarce. In fact, collecting large amounts of labeled data could be a complex and time-consuming task. And for this reason, in this work, we present a weak supervision framework along with a methodology to automatically gather depression and non-depression post samples. Moreover, we release the data set created using this methodology. Under this scheme, we're going to have two types or two groups of posts. Positive post samples, which are those providing some evidence of depression, and control post samples, which are those not providing any reference to depression. In the first case, given a set of social media users for which we have a definitive knowledge that they are suffering from depression because they have self-declared or because they have compiled a standard questionnaire such as the BDI, and a history of their textual post, we're going to define two heuristics to select, to automatically select the posts. The first heuristic is going to be based on the sentiment polarity score, while the second one is going to be based on the topical similarity with the depression taxonomy. In the case of the control post, we're going to randomly collect such set from a group of healthy users. The first heuristic is based on the sentiment polarity score, also known as semantic orientation or valence. Research has shown that the sentiment polarity score of a post could be linked with the emotion evoked by that piece of text. Therefore, we hypothesize that when that value is negative, it could be a good indicator of distress or unhappiness, especially when those posts have been written by individuals suffering from depression. It's also important to exclude from this set the false positive or noisy post. For instance, that's the worst name I ever heard. It's also a piece of text with a negative polarity score. To do so, we are going to based on psychology literature, which states that depressive moods are characterized by the predominance of sadness and disgust. Using this knowledge, we're only going to keep all those posts which contains words related with these two emotions, with at least one of these two emotions. And more, moreover, we're going to compute a depression score based on the intensity that those words have for that emotion. The second heuristic is based on the topical similarity. Basically, we want to obtain a ranked list. That is, a list of posts sorted by the topical similarity with the depression taxonomy. To create this depression taxonomy, we start with a lexicon developed by Chodbury and colleagues, and we extend such lexicon with 
all possible online vocabularies with concepts and terms commonly related to depression. Finally, with the aid of human experts, we obtain a subset of 78 depression-related terms. This taxonomy includes words such as insomnia, anxiety, delusions, and many others. Now, the second step, the following step, is to validate the methodology and the heuristic defined. To this end, we're gonna automatically draw the post from the IRIS 2018 collection. This collection is comprised of two groups of users, depressed and non-depressed, along with their history of uh, textual posts. The goal of this validation step is to verify or to determine whether a, a classification model trained with the automatically generated sets it's able to effectively distinguish between posts which are expressing or providing some evidence of depression signs from those which do not. And for this reason, we also create a validation set by randomly sampling 200 posts from each class in the IRIS 2018 collection. And we ask three human experts to label them. In this case, we're observing the results of the automatically derived sets. The first set is based on the heuristic, based on the uh, sentiment polarity score. On the left, we see the distribution of the polarity and sadness scores average. We notice that there is intersection between the curves. This intersection is actually desired since it helps to improve the decision in the boundary cases. On the right, we're studying the correlation between the sentiment polarity score and the sadness score. The correlation score, it's very close to zero, which tells us that there is almost no correlation between them. The same study is repeated for the automatically generated set based on the heuristic, uh, based on the topic topical similarity with the depression taxonomy. Again, on the left, we have the distribution of the topic similarity score, and we observe also a small intersection between the curves. On the right, we're finally studying if there is some correlation between the sets obtained by each of these heuristics. As can be seen, the correlation score is very close to zero. Finally, as stated before, we train different classification models with different features using the two automatically derived sets. Overall, a higher recall is obtained when the model is trained using the post collected by the first heuristic, while a higher precision is achieved by the models trained with the second heuristic. To conclude, in this work, we have introduced a methodology for automatically gathering post samples of depression and non-depression. We're also releasing the automatically created dataset and the validation dataset in order to foster the research on mental health and social media. And we also release the code for reproducibility. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the presentation.